Hi everyone! Hi guys, welcome back! I'm Marco here. Today we are going to talk about five things that surprise us when we moved here in the UK. Those things you cannot help but notice because you've never seen them before and they're very different from what you're used to in your home country. So let's start. Number one, cues. One of the first things that we noticed here was queues. We're not talking about queues at a supermarket checkout, because those you can find everywhere. But we're thinking about the queues for the bus, the train, the museum, toilet, airport, even escalator where people keep right. Standing on the right of the escalator of the London Underground is very popular. Just like fish and chips. Oh yeah. <laughs> The rumor is that British people love to queue, but most probably they love queuing as much as anyone. It's more likely that they're better at queuing because they behave more respectfully in a queue. So we noticed that the queue has a more defined shape here. Have you ever seen a queue in Italy? <laughs> it's madness. It doesn't have a shape. No, absolutely. So you're not 100% sure who is the last in the queue. And you need to investigate. <laughs> and some people will just try to cut in or jump the queue. I'm so happy to enjoy queues here, finally! <laughs> God save the queue! Mm. And Brits don't like who try to jump the queue or try to manipulate it. So if you're in the UK and you need to queue for any reasons, it's normal to ask the last person, are you in the queue? Is this the end of the queue? Even if it's quite clear. So guys, learn to respect the queue and never try to jump it or push it. And if you're carrying a suitcase or a supermarket trolley, don't get too close to the person in front of you. And if someone is unrespectful of the unwritten rules of the queue, just roll your eyes, click your tongue. <laughs> like Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> and tut. <laughs> <laughs> And if you feel very brave and you see someone pushing in... Excuse me! Exactly, in a high-pitched tone. Number two, sliders and white socks. Oh, goodness. In winter! Okay, we're Italian, so let's be honest. We are just a little obsessed with clothing. Yeah, just a bit. Just a bit. <laughs> We were very surprised the first time we saw a guy in his sliders and white socks walking down the street in London because it was raining. <laughs> and his feet were completely wet. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. And then we noticed he was not the only one. It is pretty common. So we thought, is that comfortable? Maybe it is and we don't know. Maybe we never don't. try it actually. Yeah. But we, f we think uh, you will have uh, a wet and cold fit. Mm -mm. We do understand you might want to wear them because they're comfortable for sunny days or, or around the house. <laughs> but we didn't expect to see people wearing them in autumn and winter. In Italy we wear uh, that kind of plastic slippers uh, only at the swimming pool or at the beach. Mm -mm. We need to unlearn our Italian dress code, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. My favorite. <laughs> Pyjama and bathrobe at the supermarket. <laughs> really? So let's keep talking about dress code. Again, Italian are super obsessed with style. We are not the perfect example of... Yeah, we, we don't follow the, the style. No, the, exactly. We're not we very stylish people. <laughs> <laughs> Let's admit it. it. It's the truth. But our eyes are trained by years of living in Italy. So before coming here, we never saw anyone wearing a pajama or a bathrobe outside the house. Wait, yeah, I saw it happening once. <laughs> At night on holiday when the hotel was evacuated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the fire alarm i mean nothing serious happened except i mean seeing mm. people in their knife <laughs> 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 
but we remember the first time when we uh, went shopping at a supermarket in London and we saw uh, two younger ladies uh, wearing a pajama and bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were surprised. Really. We were surprised, but a new world opened mm -hmm. before our eyes. And honestly, in a way, even though I will never dare to wear pajama mm -hmm. outside the house, I kind of admire their self-confidence. So we were curious and we browsed the web and we found out there is an ongoing debate <laughs> about this. <laughs> <laughs> How interesting, huh? And uh, let us know in the comment below, please. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> and anyway, pajamas are cute and comfy. So... Pajama I... world! <laughs> pajama, pajama rule! <laughs> yeah. Number four, primary and secondary traffic lights. This is beautiful yeah that's cool it's awesome we love this here you often find this primary traffic light showing red for example and another one called secondary light farther ahead which shows the same as the closer primary light a secondary light is there in case the primary light doesn't work and waiting at the stop line so mm. you don't have to strain your neck yeah <laughs> to see it it's very useful and safe. Mm -mm, we love it. Number five, parks and green areas. We are nature lovers and we like to go for a walk almost every day. We just love parks. Especially during the pandemic, most people realized how important public green spaces are. They are essential to health and well-being and to wildlife and the environment. We found out that a parliamentary inquiry uh, into public parks um, from 2017. Parks and green spaces are treasured assets and are often central to the lives of the communities. They provide opportunities for leisure, relaxation and exercise, but they are also fundamental to community cohesion, physical and mental health and well-being, biodiversity, climate change mitigation and local economic growth. Yeah, we couldn't agree more. Mm. Thank you for watching guys and we hope you like this video. So subscribe, leave a comment down below, let us know what you think. See you next time with more differences between Italy and the UK. Yeah, stay with us, see you next time. <laughs> Bye! Bye.